y'all to come on here and welcome back to Metaphor Refantasio. Last time we finished up our free time on Virga Island and got ready to head out and boy that free time got wild. We killed the giant worm that was blocking Barden. Uh, Juna, Juna showed us the truth. The Nydia, our Lollafels, or Cheebies, whichever you prefer. And Alonzo's apparently dead? Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. I There's no way in heck that I believe that. And poor Yufa, well, poor Yufa's found out that, you know, there's no such thing as a good organized religion. I'm sorry. Uh, but yes, we took an impromptu save, so I imagine the moment I hit this go button, it's, you know, basically gonna go. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's see where this takes us. I mean, I'm sure it takes us with that decided. We all helped the villagers prepare for the festival. And once the effigy of the Dragon God was complete, the sun was already down. Ooh, I forgot about the festival. This should be fun. Hmm? Come on, give me something here to work. God dang, go for, straight from morning to evening. Oh, it's Burning Man, or Burning Dargan in this case. Didn't expect them to throw such a party before our departure. A far cry from our first night here in a cell. <laughs> I hear it is a festival in the Dragon God's name, meant to ensure a safe sea voyage. In place of a lighthouse, their fire is kept burning until the morning. Hmm. I say, these locals are barely well informed. They're up to their gills in practical and theoretical magma theory. I mean, if you've got to live it, then you're going to learn it. Not as focused on the mechanicals as us mainlanders, but the land's far from barbaric. Their insights could rather improve the runner's design, you know? Oh, Nurus thinking about trying to put wings on the runner again. Ah, speaking of, I finished with the lance replica. Perfect. Give that to Louis. We're finally ready. Grand, ain't it? Del's all better. And we've got some choice souvenirs to bring back to Lord Luis. Mm-hmm. We're not out of the woods yet. Don't be too quick to celebrate. <sighs> Good old Fidelio, bringing the party down already. Hey, come on, lads, loosen up. It's a party. We've all had a little fun. And you? What's a sanctist fat cat like you doing getting all giddy over a pagan festival? <laughs> I have to laugh, don't I? You know, I thought the crier's life had made me pretty knowledgeable about our world, but it turns out most of what I knew was lies. Welcome to religion, good sir. Makes me think, maybe this is how my old father felt. Hmm? Crier of family trade, eh? Imagine that. <laughs> the Crown Theocracy does love their hereditary titles. Yeah, my old man was a serious fella. <laughs> More than me, that's for sure. He called out corruption where he saw it, made him a pariah. But there you go. Damn. Yeah, I remember he once flat out suggested igniters were more dangerous than the Crown Theocracy was letting on. And there was that riot in the slums, of course, the, the one started by that parapus. The church dismissed it as paupers revolting over their conditions. Yeesh. Oh. My old man. Well, he said it wasn't a riot at all outright accused the crown theocracy of turning an innocent parapus feral through horrific magic experiments the way the brothers just reacted there <clears throat> they know something what mm, who knows what really happened there either way nobody took my father seriously he was condemned as a liar and he died young yeah this is why you need evidence my man just the way it is i suppose people will always prefer their own feelings the truth. Happiness is a luxury hard to come by otherwise. I mean, it's just fake happiness though at that point. Hard to care about the world after that. I was a poor excuse for a crier if you ask me. <laughs> yep, here I am. That's beyond weird. <laughs> Somehow, you lot have managed to make the world seem interesting again. <laughs> I'm genuinely grateful, you know? makes a man feel as if he owes you. Ooh, yeah, having a crier in our pocket might not be a bad idea. You owe us nothing. Can't afford any rumors about you being biased in our favor anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Honestly, though, you need anything. You've got me on your side. I'll do what I can. 
Also, you guys have all, like, multiple people have mentioned that, uh, Basilio has been slowly turning to our side. I have been seeing that. For now, I'll catch a boat ride to Altabri ahead of you. Once this festival's over, it'll be farewell for the moment. So, let's make this a bash to remember. Of course, there's what to do about Fidelio, because I don't think he's willing to, you know, betray Louis. Now, time for some fun. Bring out the treat. <laughs> oh, dear. The treat. Oh, my God. Those are gorgeous those looking. Are... Hulkenberg, look, it's something edible. The fruit is called a dragon's tears. They're quite precious. Their tree only bears once every few years. Ah, it is delicious. Beyond delicious. <laughs> there she goes again. <laughs> Wonderful. This again. Hulkenberg's tastes are a dubious metric at best. Please, it's the rarest of harvests, and we would like to share it with you. Oh. Yeah, see, you know, we're going to use utensils like civilized people as opposed to Hulkenberg. It's just cramming the damn thing in her mouth. The juice bursts forth as soon as I put it in my mouth. Sounds. I feel quite. quite. Uh... Oh, God, they're fermented. They're fermented! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, drunk Hulkenberg! <laughs> What's going on? There's something odd about the way those two are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But he's crying. What is this fruit? <laughs> you see, in all times so long ago, Oh my god. So time people <laughs> ate this to reach a higher plane of exist existence and talk to the gods. Oh god, they're not drunk, they're high. They're high off the freaking asses. Uh, ha. Huh. Yes, you certainly appear to have reached some higher state. Glad I passed. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, even me, I'm drunk. Oh. Finally back to normal. Well, that sure felt like a festival. Not that I'm complaining. Oh god, nurse, what are you doing over there? Oh, and did you hear? The people of this island make a wish over that flame. Hmm? It's said that if you write your wish on a piece of paper, it'll bring you good luck. We don't often get to relax like this. So why don't you go there with someone? Hmm? We certainly have plenty of time. This is a rare opportunity. Who should I invite? Have you mm -hmm. decided on someone? Huh? Oh. 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 A little personal bonding time. Well, Stroll's Mac. Here's the weird thing. Like, in Persona, this makes sense because characters need points to level up and there's romantic lines. This one. There's no romantic lines, and people don't need points to level up, so... I guess this is just hangout for hangout's sake. Uh, who do I want to hang out with? Who do I want to hang out with? I want to hang out with Juna. I want to hang out with Juna. She's the... She's honestly been, like, a blast to have in the party. Great. Aw, oh, not voiced? Are two people walking side by side, enveloped by the sound of waves as the sun-kissed horizon disappears into the darkness of a starry sky stretched overhead? <laughs> Damn, that was a mouthful, girl. I wonder what the others would think if they saw us like this... Siblings or something? Parent and child, maybe? That we had something special. Aww. Wow. Oh, well, aren't you daring? You wouldn't want me to see you in a whole new light now, would you? <laughs> I do wonder, though. What's going to happen when you find that special someone? I suppose I stand as much a chance as any other, no? Ah, but shall we head back to the fire? Wouldn't want the others to worry if we're not back before dark? Or well, maybe we should? Uh-oh. <laughs> wow, I can sense the magla flowing through the flames. Yep. I'm not really one to beg a deity for anything, but given the situation we're in, anything's worth a try. You don't pray? You don't seem religious, yeah. Hm. Hard to imagine you praying for help. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't get me wrong. I've nothing against prayer. I just prefer to take action myself before leaving it in God's hands. I... Not to say I think I'm some kind of superwoman. That I can bend fate to work out exactly the way I wanted to. I'm being well as little sister, becoming a songstress, helping the prince, beating you, and standing here now. 
You can't chuck all that up to sheer force of will. There's got to be a kind of power that's guided me along, no matter how gently. Hi, I'm Dekimon. I'm the one in control of this little story. <laughs> got it? So, let's get to it, shall we? We're going to pray to the Dragon God for our efforts to bear fruit. And? Wait, why is the paper so puny? You don't expect me to fit my every wish in such a small space, do you? <laughs> It'll just write smaller. Oh, it's late, isn't it? But hey, can I perhaps stay with you a little longer? There's something I want to give you, Zeta. Well? Oh, it's nothing so special. I just wanted you to know I appreciate that you're always doing your best. I picked out something I thought would suit you. Thank you. You can stop building it up. <laughs> That's really nice of you. <laughs> oh, if you keep up this pace, who knows? Maybe one day you'll be a man strong enough to be worthy of me. Or don't keep me waiting, hmm? Bye. There. Now we can head back. Aww. Judy gave me a gift and we returned to the group. A stylish fan for the masked dancer. Oh. Interesting. I wonder if that's a way to get a, uh, like, you know, a really high level weapon for any given party member's core class. Cool. Meanwhile, we've got the Magnus brothers up here. Watching the little kitties play. Tell, you hear all that? What that cry was talking about? Yeah. Sounded proper familiar to me. The riot. They're talking about the riot. It's easy to blame the Sanctus Church for the whole thing. But maybe not all of them were happy about it. Oh. Is that why they're working for Louis to get back at the church for that riot? Makes you think. I remember St. Rella looked like her heart was breaking seeing us at death's door. Maybe. Maybe she knew what was going on. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Del. What do we believe in, really? Are we absolutely positive that, you know, Count Luisa's vision and ours have enough in common? Yep. We're swaying Basilio. Maybe even Fidelio's getting I some doubts we were here. Done talking about this. He's the reason we got this far. A couple of parapus orphans. Nobody else wants us. Nobody cares about us. We'd be nothing without Count Luis. Hey, you, you want to abandon Luis? There's room in this place for you. We'll keep you around. I know, Tell, but... He makes all them speeches about equality, but in the end... He's gonna leave the weak to die. I heard him talk about his ideal world, and... It sounds like a world where we'd have died alone in the dirt. No Saint Rella to save us. Is that what we're fighting for? Too late for that kind of talk, brother. Blood on our hands either way. Yeah, there's plenty of blood on our hands, too. Just join the party. Hey, Literally. What are you two doing on your own? Come join the party. You'll miss the whole festival. <laughs> Spoilers. Lady Juna. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute. I just said join the party. What's that look about? I know you're absolutely smitten with me, love, but you needn't be so tense about it. <laughs> Do you plan to kill Count Luis? Ah, shit. Busted! <laughs> what are you talking about? He can't be killed anyway. Lady Juna, I don't think your heart is with Count Luis anymore. Or maybe it never was. Oops. There's a side of you that you only show them. But us? I'm starting to think we've never seen the real you. Well, sorry Fidelio, we're leaving you behind on the island. Are you really so worried for Count Luis? He's the one who measures worth in power. So what would he think to hear you underestimating him? <laughs> so you don't actually work for Forden or nothing then? No oh. ulterior motives? Oh, damn. <laughs> no, we definitely don't work for Forden. I've been with Count Luis since before the race even started, haven't I? Ever since he was stripped of command. Hey, Del. I'm sorry if I made you worry. That's my fault. But trust me on this. I promise I'll make sure this world's got more to give you two than despair. Damn. See, that's a good truthful statement without saying that, oh no, she's still working for Louis. I saw it with my own eyes. Hmm? That lance gets past the king's magic. Oh. That means it can kill a candidate. They were testing it among themselves, and Lady Juna was right there with them. Shit, they saw that? You serious? 
How are we supposed to report that to Count Luis? Oh, don't worry, it's my own problem. I told you to leave the thinking to me. <sighs> you know why? I really like Lady June's songs. Mm hmm. And I like seeing you listening to her when you get the chance. You've got arm around your heart, Tell, and her music pierces it. <clears throat> Come on, join the winning side. Join the good guy's side. I... I don't want to kill Lady Juna. And you don't either, Del. Do you? Hmm. Ooh, come on. We're slowly getting through to him, slowly. Gotta tell him about the prince. Maybe that'll snap him out of it. <sighs> so tonight's our last night on the island. Tomorrow's the big day, so let's make sure we're plenty rested. Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna let me get out of here safely, are you? Ugh. What do we get? Oh god. Why did this suddenly go crazy? Pagan Festival. A Virgo Island Festival praying for the safe voyage of ships. Originally marked the annual first day of fishing season. An effigy of the Dragon God is lit aflame, serving as both an offering to the Dragon God and a beacon for sailors in the night. These days, however, it's a tradition of more cultural significance than practical. Historically, danger has apparently befallen villagers who went to sea without holding the festival beforehand. Dragon's Tear, this stuff is just dangerous. A sacred fruit harvested only once every few years on Virga Island, also called a phantom fruit as it's never seen outside the island. Many of its harvests are used in rituals to converse directly with gods, but it's also served on special occasions like festivals or to special guests. Their sugary, succulent juices and rich flavor make them quite a treat. It must be noted, however, that those who eat one tend to behave most unusually for a short period thereafter. <laughs> Exactly, they're just drunk. Ligno? Oh, the little town we picked up from earlier. And Scoundrel's Hold, yep, we were there. And more? More? Oh, the truth of the Parapus Riots. Batlin the Sanctus Crier revealed more about the Parapus-led riots. According to him, the riots began not to the Parapus' own volition, but instead were the result of madness caused by the magic igniter experiments run by the Sanctus Church in the shadow of the law. If true, then the Parapus would also be victims in the incident. Heisme, who lost his son during the riots, was unaware of this information. Oh god, I hope he heard them when they were talking about that. Really do! Hmm? Royal Magic Protection and Dueling. It was discovered that there is an exception to the protective magic that prohibits the forceful elimination of a top-ranking candidate. A duel, a battle in which both parties agreed to fight after formally declaring their identities. With these conditions met, the protective magic is revoked no matter the candidate's place in the ranking, or what poor thing happens to them afterwards. And lastly, a couple of things here. The land of ceremony we saw. And the scorching heat. Oh, refers to the rare occurrence when temperatures exceed 35C around the Virga Islands. Eh. F that. That's too damn hot for my liking. Alright, it's traveling day. I must say, I am sad to leave this island, if for no reason that every meal here has been an utter delight. I'm almost certain you said the same thing when we left Brylehaven. And Matira. A new world of cuisine is but a few days away, if you'll just be patient. Mind your tongue, Stroll. A few days is thrice as many meals. Uh, oh, you're really taking this hard. Uh, when you said your goodbyes to the people and the food, meet at the Gauntlet Runner. <laughs> oh. Come on, people. We gotta get rolling here. Do I need to buy anything before heading out? Okay, then. Uh, when you're ready, everyone will be waiting for you at the Gauntlet Runner. Don't worry. I think I spent more than enough money. But let me make a quick double check just to make sure there's no quests. And pick up my mag from the stone. God damn, I was hoarding. 10k? Well, I suppose that's the joy of being in the single digits now. We get a buttload. Alright, time to say farewell to Virga Island. Looks like the sea settled somewhat. We've got a map of the Alterberry region too. I'd say we're set. Where are the brothers? Now we can leave with our minds clear and pockets full, eh? But where are those brothers? Out on errands? Hmm. I say we just leave them behind. Eh, uh, nice thought, but I don't think Louie would be too happy, although fuck him. Yeah, that seems like a bad idea. Well, long as we've got a minute alone, let's go over our plan. Now we're gonna find out they're hiding here, listening to us. As soon as we get to Alterbury, we give Luis the fake lance Nurus made up for us. While I hold on to the real one. Mm -hmm. Then, on the eve of this divine relic dedication ceremony, we use the real lance to end this. 
once and for all. He doesn't know we've worked out its powers. We'll use that to our advantage. Oh dear. Something tells me this is not going to end well. Juna, we'll need you to convince Luis to attend the eve of the festival. Oh, I've been pestering him to do so for a while now. Don't want him spending the evening in his heavily fortified Skyrunner after all. So where is the false lance in question? Right here. Ready to poke an eye out. Oh damn, I thought that was the real one. Oh, I guess oh, it was the real one. What do you think? A dead ringer, eh? Such detail. Even I can't tell them apart. When we get to Alterbury, we'll pass off the fake to Luis. Then, we execute our plan. Oh, by the way, I was talking with the Magnus brothers earlier. I think they might be on to us. Oof. Well, thank you for telling us, Juna. <sighs> That's not good. We'll need to be more careful. Wait. Footsteps. Speak of the devils. We'll need to hide the real lance. Oh, thank goodness Heisme was You're listening. Late. We were about to leave you behind. <laughs> right. All present and counted. Anchors away, what? Mm-hmm. Aye, aye, me hearties. <laughs> You <laughs> please don't ever do that again. Uh, what's wrong then? Is that not the customary exclamation of Salus? Mr. Bucklin was very specific. Oof. <laughs> I wouldn't believe everything he says. Agreed. Tis a strange melancholy. Leaving the people we have so recently come to know. Mm. We'll be back. With some fantastic tales to tell them too. Yes, certainly. Hmm. Oh dear. All right, how long is it going to take us to get to our next major city? One day. Two days. This is all to bear. That's it, really? Wow. We'll make faster progress back on land. Also, it looks like two stop points. Huh. Cool. Snow. Ugh. <laughs> Here's out to Betty Heights. It's quite a ways. Think we'll make it in time? Oh, without a problem. This fine wind will have us making landfall by the morrow, so the whole trip should be two nights with three days of travel. Oh. So we'll only have to endure one day of being rocked sick. <laughs> no, there's a grim face if I ever saw one. Captain for Stroll's sake, let us make haste. <laughs> At full speed ahead to Alterbury Heights, capital of Ontario. Take care you don't tumble overboard now. And away we go. With a new ally in tow, the Gauntlet Runner at last departs the island toward the eastern side of the Inland Sea. Their destination is the Principality of Montario. Its vast mountain crags, so different from the western terrain, can be seen clearly from the water. Their forthcoming task would be their greatest trial yet. They felt the tension rise in wordless silence. How oh, lucky us. All right, first things first, gotta figure out what the heck I wanna do on the runner. Indeed. Two more days till we reach Alterbury, I think. Uh, well, at least on this journey, we don't have to worry about that sea monster anymore. Theoretically, at least. Ooh, Hulkenberg's gonna have wisdom for us. That's probably what the plan is. Mm hmm. If there are two stopover points, but then again, like, wisdom is like the only unique thing to hang out with, so why not? Hulkenberg, let's play some children's cart, children's board games. Zeta, you've come at the perfect moment. I was just thinking I'd ponder some battle strategies over my game board. Yes. I'm probably lose as usual, but sure, why not? So that's your game. Oh, I believe I see your intentions now. So in turn, I will. You know you really suck at this game. <laughs> Hulkenberg used two pieces to flank me. My pieces are surrounded. You sought to pursue the enemy in front of you, and allowed yourself to be flanked by the allies as a result. What should we do? You are encircled by my pieces both your left and right. While flanked, your chances for victory grow ever fainter. What's your next move? Spread out. Charge. Uh, shit, what is the correct option? I think you probably, you know, encircle at this point. Sure. We withdraw and regroup, yeah. Mm. Withdrawing is often a wise move, but requires deft timing. It is too late in this situation as my pieces have already cut off your escape route. Perhaps not the wisest move, but I still got some wisdom out of it. Oh god, damn. I got less than normal. No. <laughs> Disappointment. So, 
You are now fully aware of the importance of maintaining proper formations in battle, correct? Now then, make your next move. Oof. Alright, evening camp time. I imagine we're gonna do the same thing we've done with all the others. We should reach the city the day after tomorrow. I can feel the temperature dropping since we made landfall. I bet it'll be pretty cold in Alterbury. Yep, like I thought, everyone just wants to hang out and talk imagination. Which is fine. Pardon me, but... Oh, Seta. Are you free at the moment? I just finished meditating and... I'd like to talk with you a bit, if you don't mind. By recalling the past and planning for the future, I can hone my imagination. Yes. Still need to hone it. Still need more of it. <sighs> I've only heard about the outside world from imported books and my brother's stories. I can't believe that starting today, I will travel to those lands myself. I never would have had the confidence to attempt such a venture on my own. I am truly glad to have met you and everyone else, Sita. Welcome to the team. Same here. Glad to have you. Yes. <sighs> Glad I was able to meet you too, Yufa. I do believe. To meet all of you and embark on this journey, it almost feels as though this was guided by the will of a great power. Speaking of which, Juna graciously gave me some advice about trips such as this one. She said, make sure you keep one eye on your wallet whenever you're in town, and never ever ever follow a stranger somewhere. <sighs> oh, Juna's kindness truly knows no end. I feel quite lucky to go on a trip with so many people watching over me. Oh, that reminds me. I meant to ask you, what were things like when you began this journey, Zeta? Mm. I must admit, I am somewhat curious about the place where your mission began. It is my hope that one day, when all this is over, that I may visit it. Aww. All right. Hang out and- Oh god, is that seven pips of imagination? <laughs> ah, dang. Oh, I'm sorry. I was having so much fun talking with you that time escaped me. Is it alright if we continue? It is more than all right, especially if you're going to give me seven pips of imagination. Woo! Yufa and I talked for a while. It would seem that. We now stand among the mountaintops. I have long gazed at the peaks of Montario from the island, but I never imagined I would see them this close. Alterbury remains cold year round, so quite accordingly its people have perfected the art of the piping hot stew. And it's home to the foremost opera house in the kingdom as well. I suppose that will be the stage of our confrontation with Louis. I guess. Let's keep our hopes high. Mm-hmm. Those are some tall mountains on the horizon. Hello? Let's make sure all our preparations are complete by tomorrow night. Uh, wouldn't it be tonight, though, instead? Considering how hard it was to crank up imagination from that big boost, I kind of want to hang out with Juno. Actually... Or Yufa, sorry. Oh, Zeta, would you join me in a bit of meditation? Yes. Continue to crank out my, uh, my stats. That's what I want to see get to see fives across the board eventually. My legs are numb after sitting in the same position for so long. Zeta, try to clear your mind. May I? Meditation is about freeing yourself from your cage of a body and conversing with your soul. If you listen to the voice of your heart, everything here in the world should cease to bother you. Hmm. Hmm. I should attempt to do what she says. Listen to the voice of my heart. But how? Recross my legs. Focus on the numbness. Bear with it. Huh. Listen to the voice of his heart. I guess bear with it. I'll just try being patient. Not good at that, apparently. It almost seems like there is excess energy in your body. You can't communicate with your soul in such a state. I couldn't rid myself of all my idle thoughts. Ah. All right. Okay, five pips of imagination. That's fine. God, that is a slow crawl. Farewell. Oh, it seems you've relaxed a little. So let's keep up a bit longer, shall we? Mm-hmm. Definitely more efficient than the book. The book is like very inefficient compared to doing that. Near a stop, I imagine. Look at this. Yep. Oh, you lot are going to believe the view I'm seeing outside. I'm hitting the brakes. The gauntlet runner makes a short stop in front of Colorodio Cliff, a bluff so tremendous it fills one's vision. Its massive fissure is said to be the vestige of a god's wrath as only a force capable of splitting heaven and earth could cause it. Perfectly balanced by the work of nature, or the wrath of gods extolled in the myths of creation, none can say. Hmm. Whoa. Looks like a dragon was teething on it. Whoa. Absolutely incredible. I've heard of sheer cliffs before, but I never imagined something like this. <sighs> Indeed. 
Falling off that precipice would be unfathomably terrifying and exhilarating, I imagine. Makes me want to jump. Makes me want to scream. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. I'd like to try jumping off of it with a bungee cord or wings or something. Damned boarfish sent the scullions! What? Gah. Oi! What's gotten into you? Oh my, that was rather pleasing. It's quite refreshing, you know, to pull your voice from the very bottom of your gut and yell in such a manner. Speaking of... I am reminded of the time you were all yelling before me. It was a rather terrible experience, I admit. But if I may, I would like to try my hand at this yelling. Listen! Never again shall I sleep in a roach-infested inn! I feel you. You're over here. I feel you, man. I'm with you there. <laughs> <laughs> How amusing. I would also like to try screaming as well. Hmm. What's the matter? I fully intended to do it, but the words just won't come out at all, and I... Uh, um... Oh, this girl is just too charming. Never change love. But does anybody else have something to yell about? I sense that gazing off the cliff's edge and being filled with an unexplainable urge to scream has somehow broadened my wisdom. All right. Barely. Jeez, emphasis on barely. That barely moved it at all. And wisdom well, five's gonna take some work. Oh, then I suppose it's old Neris's turn. I prepared a list of complaints that I wish I could recite to you all on a daily basis, and ah, got a chilly out here, isn't it? We should head back before we all catch a cold. Quickly. Yes, we shouldn't allow ourselves to spend too much time on these distractions. Oh, come on! But I, I must scream! <laughs> Dude, you scream anyway. <laughs> ah, as always, I've drawn the place. Here you go. Thank you. <sighs> another night, another campsite. And more imagination to pick up. We should arrive this time after tomorrow. We've only got a limited amount of time left to enjoy these quiet moments. Once we get to Alterbury, well, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, shit's gonna happen. There we are. Now, for oh Juna. Oh, if it isn't Zeta. I'm so bored and I'm just not in the mood to sing. It sure would be nice to have someone to talk to, though. I recall in the past, yeah. It seems like between every main mission and these trips, everyone just gives imagination. And apparently, the, you know, the newer the party member, the more imagination they give. <sighs> I can hardly believe that we got hold of the Divine Lance. I knew teaming up with you was the wise move. Your strength and competencies were impeccable, naturally. But most of all, I appreciate the rapport I've enjoyed with all of you. So you like energetic rapport, huh? You're strange. You fit right in, girl. <laughs> Oh yes, I've always been adept at blending into my cut and milieu, but I'm actually not doing much of that with you all. I'm just being myself. Yeah, no need to hide like you do with Louis. Oh, for so many other people, I give them what they desired. I performed the role of sweet, virtuous Juna the Songstress. Ah, but you don't treat me that way. I was a little miffed and even disappointed because of it, to be honest. But I'm sure you'll be a shining star one day. Actually, I'm absolutely positive about it. And this is coming from me. So you better believe in yourself. Aw. Uh, I felt my imagination increase. All right. Yeah, I'll take that. Six pips, come on. I can see it moving, but it's still moving slow. Oh, is it that time already? I do feel I'm might drowsy. But we can talk just a bit more before we have a keep, can't we? Ah. Uh. <laughs> I do enjoy hanging with the party members. It is nearly time. It is only a ways further until we reach Alterbury. The city is likely a buzz with activity related to Saint's Day. I wonder if Lewis is already there. Sooner or later, we have to hand Jack Adios over to him, or at least the fake one. One must wonder what the brothers will tell him of our time on the island. I do hope they will leave out any unnecessary details. Got it? And we just have to stand tall and be confident. If you have to sell a lie, look them straight in the eye and say every word like you truly believe it. That's what I do. Tonight we'll deliver the lance to Louis. Is oh, this is the last time you'll be able to relax for a while. Once we arrive, we'll be jumping right into it. I can't blame you for feeling nervous, though. After all, we know what's coming. Yeah, we do, don't we? Oh, uh, well, looks like imagination might be on the list again. Could do more Hulkenberg wisdom, too. Actually, wait, hold on. Where to? No, hold on. Is there another, uh... I thought there was another stop point, but I guess I can't see our current route this way. Oh, do I do wisdom or do I do imagination? We'll do imagination. I can't believe how hungry I am. Any minute my stomach's gonna start growling. Don't get distracted by your thoughts, Seta. May I? To meditate is to empty the mind. 
it is to break away from our day-to-day -day anxiety and agony in one single moment, here and now. If you're having trouble, try to imagine a place that relaxes your spirit. Hmm. Hmm. A place that relaxes my spirit, what should I imagine? A burning fire. One sheep, two sheep. A grand feast, no. No, a night at the campfire is pretty relaxing, let's be honest. All right. I imagined a burning fire. I'm envisioning a crackling fire. With each wavering glint of flame, another one of my thoughts disappears. I feel that by coming out of my shell and broadening my horizons, my imagination has increased and I didn't suck this time, so I got the full six. Ah, oh, so close. <laughs> it seems to relax a little. There we go. All right. Fun time's over, I'm afraid. Time for the main story to kick up. Ah, uh, Nura speaking. Or, oh right, there is another pit stop, wasn't there? Ha, this is Nurus. I've got something on the old girl's radar again, so we'll be taking a short stop here. Before Altabury's mountains, the gauntlet runner sets upon the murky graveyard. The colossal bridges overhead are an impressive sight. During the Annex War, this land was a fierce battleground. Many soldiers, unable to return to their loved ones, found their final rest here. But few honor the dead. Their spirits take no solace. Their tragic remains are desecrated by wild dogs, leaving their bones exposed to the elements. Damn. That's sad. Oh, this place is just unpleasant! Just look at it! Whoa! These bitches are huge! It is an area defined by its numerous valleys. The bridges connect the flatlands and increase the amount of places in which people may live. Ah, oh, that makes sense. But if these bridges were to fall in battle, those people would end up isolated. Hey! Oh yes, all very fascinating. But have you looked at what's directly in front of you? There are bones of people, aren't there? They are the remains of those who fell during the Annex War. This was the site of a fierce battle, and the dead were left to the elements, denied the dignity of a proper burial. This land is tragic. This land is cursed. No, it's tragedy. And we shouldn't disrespect the fallen here, exactly. Yeah. Indeed. I can't bear to think of something on this scale happening again. It brings me no pleasure to see it, yet it is valuable to experience the cold reality of battle beyond the legends and tales of valor. Carve this memory into your hearts. Mm. Oh, that is why the magma that drifts about this place carries such an oppressive weight. I can feel the sadness and regret of those whose lives came to an end here. I feel as though my wisdom has deepened after considering those who found their eternal rest here. All right. That's not even halfway. Ugh. Well, imagination's almost done. Eloquence is a little over halfway. Tolerance is gonna need some love too. Uh, hey. Oh, something wrong, Louis. Your face has gone blue. Are you scared? There's a shadow right behind. Yes, let's do it. Let's hey. scare the shit out of him. <laughs> behind you, nurse. I just saw. Hey. Ah! Don't refrain from doing that again. Things of that matter are not my forte. <laughs> Oh, white nurse, I'm surprised you put any stock in scary stories. You're a more gentle soul than I gave you credit for. Ah, too true, too true. Uh, before all else, I am a delicate flower. Well then. Well then, shall we make a quiet departure so as not to rouse the dead? Mm-hmm. That's my fault. I'm sorry to have made such a fuss. I'd like to give those who died a proper send-off, and drew this with that in mind. Not sure I really want to give that to Maria. I'll take this so I don't forget the people whose lives came to an end here. That one's sad. Altabury Heights, capital of the Principality of Montario, the eastmost country annexed into the Kingdom of Ucronia. The mountain path leading to the city begins near the coastline, but few gauntlet runners can contend against its steep slope. Those who complete the arduous climb are rewarded. City lights, dusted with snow, twinkle beautifully in the valley. But what awaits the party there is no reward, but their greatest trial thus far. The hour of reckoning draws near, and they steal themselves anew. Oh, lucky us. <laughs> Negative five Celsius. Well, it is nighttime. It's still pretty freaking cold. Oh. The seat of Sanctism, Altabury. Truly, I never thought I would see it in person. Hmm. What is that giant structure? The monolith. In Sanctus scripture, they tell of how the stone was shaped by God's own hand. 
It's afloat. I'd only heard rumors that it didn't touch the ground, but to see it now. <laughs> Magnets. <sighs> Are we finally moving again? <laughs> just another trip for our songstress. Yeah, just waiting in line. We're here at last. Oh, goodness. It's a pretty town. Do not get me wrong, it is a pretty looking mm. town. We decided to present Louis with Dracodius, Lance of the Dragon God. Aboard his gauntlet runner, the Corridorus. Let's hope he doesn't find out the Lance is a fake. Well done. So this is the Lance of Legend, is it? Mm-hmm. I am called Euphasia, priestess of the island. For personal reasons, I have joined them on their journey. You do not detest me? I owe my life to them, and I understand they operate under your guidance. Indeed. I had heard you were able to obtain the lance without incurring the islander's hatred. Quite a feat, now that I know it to be true. Well done. <laughs> At last, it seems that even fate has abandoned Fordham. Thanks to you, I was spared the effort of sifting through ashes to find this. Jeez, ashes. Dude, you, you want to go down there and deal with the freaking humans and everything else in that temple? Go nuts. If the islanders could not be persuaded, my next course would have been to raise their village to the ground. The Caradrius' batteries would make that a fairly simple task. Jesus. That might be enough to turn the brothers against him. What? Hmm? Why are you surprised? At times, sacrifice is necessary to save the many. Was that not the exact reasoning by which your countrymen would have seen you die? You're... Yeah, yeah, you for keep... Turn it down, like, three notches, please. Trust me, we'll get our shot at it. Have the lance brought to my chamber later. Thank you for your hard work in spite of your wound. Take care of yourselves. Oh, dear. Now we need only to wait until tomorrow for the Saints' Day Festival. The whole event will be held over two days at the Opera House. Mm. The first day is the eve of the festival, and I'm scheduled to sing. Hope you're looking forward to it. Main festivity starts on the second day. That's when all these divine relics will be dedicated and sealed. It's aimed at proving beyond a doubt that Sanctism is the highest authority. Yeah, I'd rather be using this thing to stamp Fordham than Louis right now, but, you know, I'll take Louis. All kind of daft though, isn't it? If they were that confident in their scriptures, you'd think they wouldn't have to bother with all that. Nope. This is where Fordham dies. He and Sanctism itself. At the very least, it's worth giving him a memorable end. Lord Louise, I do hope you'll come and watch me sing this time. We missed you at the opening ceremony. If you're not there, it'll hardly be worth it. You needn't worry. Having come all this way, it would be a waste not to show. <laughs> well, I'm off to check out the Opera House. Want to make sure everything's ship shaped for my solo, of course. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Yep. You have all performed admirably. You exceeded my every expectation. Soon, Forden's reign will come crashing down. From this point onward, I would have you forfeit the competition and dedicate yourself fully to my campaign. Well, fuck that. I'm too close to actually winning this thing. Understood. For now, rest your wings a while. Tomorrow's festivities will be a grand show indeed. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is going to end very badly, isn't it? It seems the lands passed muster. Yoras is a peerless craftsman, if not else. Ooh, it's a pretty city from down this street level. <sighs> yeah, Yufa, I know. Your first time meeting Louis, you already want to punch him in the dick. Yufa? Are you okay? I, I get that. I really do. He would have... He would have destroyed my home. How could he suggest such carnage with not a shade of guilt? And Louis's really big on ends justify means. I was sure that deep down, all people are inherently good at heart. But now, mm -hmm. you made it sound like you were bound to kill him at any cost. And now I understand why. 
I see. Then let's get back on track and go find ourselves an inn. You've got more supporters now. I dare say we'll find better lodging than we could before. Yeah, I'm gonna say, please, we have to do better than we did in Brylehaven. I wouldn't be so sure. This city's in the palm of Forden's hand, and we're the ones who humiliated him during the exhibition. All the same, we're about to do something big. To be honest, I'll take anywhere, so long as I can stretch out. Oh, Stroll, famous last words, buddy. Uh, it's cold. Oops, sorry, I didn't see that. I was too busy looking at Stroll. <laughs> uh, let's just say the Gauntlet Runner, let's set up camp right here. Oof. Yeah, I'm freezing my wings off. Uh, then why don't we look for an inn run by a Mustari? Oh? I thought this city was the seat of the church. In times before the church, it said many diverse faiths and teachings took root in this city. That's why Montario is the only mainland nation that trades with the islands. Ah, you guys have a foothold here. Indeed. My grandfather often said that until his generation, the only prominent building of the Sanctus Church was that opera house. Though the prevailing story now, of course, is that Sanctism reclaimed this land from malevolent pagans. Hmm. <laughs> Either way, I'm certain there should be quite a few Mustari who feign conversion and live in seclusion. If one of these Mustari inns really exists, it may work in our favor. Let's look for it. Sounds good. Anything to get out of the cold. Speaking of... If it is a Mustari-owned inn we seek, then I know of one in the center of town. It is called Skywood Tavern. I recall it being rather pleasant, with very little that would point to its Mustari roots. Certainly. It was on Dear Franco Street, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> ah, so cold! And this Hockenbuck is in an element! Can we get going before the rest of us freeze, though? Ah, uh, why not? Right. Doesn't look like I have much else to do at the moment. Well other than hit up the memorandum. What now? The Montario Opera House. Ooh. An opera house but long ago in Matario's capital, mostly reserved for special sanctus functions. The theater's unorthodox structure was born of being carved out of a cave from the foot of the rocky mountain below the monolith. Famed for its opulent grandeur, it boasted the highest guest capacity in the kingdom until the building of the regolith grand cathedral. Murky graveyard. Ah, oh, lovely. This place is just ugh. Like, that's all that place is. It's just a place of ugh. Hmm? Still missing something in history here. What am I missing? Ah, Alterbury Heights itself. Uh, the capital of the Principality of Ontario, deep in the snowy mountains. Originally a small, empty plateau, most of the city's modern-day structure was developed through workers' labor. The lower level in particular was developed over the last century and features a vast bridge over a deep ravine. The city's distant grandeur among the misty peaks when viewed from the foot of the mountain has earned it the occasional nickname of the City in the Sky. Said to be the birthplace of sanctism, it is home to a mysterious towering stone called the Monolith and the entire city is renowned as a holy land. The Saints' Day Festival takes place here every autumn, with some worshippers making long cross-kingdom pilgrimages to attend. And I'm guessing this one will be the other thing we saw, the cliff and the monolith too, huh? A massive, naturally levitating rock at the highest speed of elevation at the heart of Altaberry. Said to be a rock shaped by God's own hands, the mysterious site was proclaimed sacred ground by the Sanctus Church. It is theorized that it levitates because of a large magma crystal vein in the nearby land. But the church's designation prevents scholars from approaching, so the surrounding geology has never been researched to full understanding. <sighs> magnets. It's magnets. <laughs> big friggin' magnets. Oh, there's the big rock. All right then. Let's see, there's a weapons and armor shop, there's an item shop. Right. I have to come back to those uh once it's idols day again. Oh, we're uh we're chatty over here. Hmm? Generic shop. Anytime generic shops. Growing flowers. Hmm, sounds interesting, but I'd rather grow food. Hero's Jewel Root Seed? Ho! Yeah, they're not... I'll take one of those. Wonder how many of those I'll actually give. Here's the place. Skyward Tavern. Welcome. Hmm? Wait. A band of youths with a knight and a ugif. Are you perhaps the candidate who brought Joanna the Sanctares to confess? Mm-hmm. And you are hiding your third eye be behind that scarf. One glance and you knew. Listen, we just... I don't care if you did the deed or not, but please take your business elsewhere. I'm sorry. 
but I have my own reputation to think about. Ugh, figures. You follow Sanctism's teachings? You? A Mustari who wears no mask? Same as you. I am Euphasia. I am the priestess of Virga. No, of Etria. The priestess? Impossible. The island priestess would never leave the village behind. Hm. I have my reasons, but I wish to see the outside world that I might better protect our island. I have no proof, but... You would raise another tribe to the throne. Tis a longer story than we've time to tell. We only wish to avoid a tyrant's reign. Yet tis not from our own ambition that I speak so. The throne belongs to one truly worthy. Mm-hmm. Me! But if you insist, we will leave. <sighs> it's just... You look so like the priestess before you, I can't just turn you away. Oh. Knew the prior priestess, huh? Fine. You can stay here. As long as you don't make trouble for me. Wait, would the prior priestess have been Yufa's mother? Hmm, maybe. Thank you. I suppose it is easier to understand each other without the masks in the way. Not all of us mainland Mastari hate the Sanctus Church. We'd rather preserve the peace we have. Hmm. And, well, it's a sorry excuse for an innkeeper who turns away travelers. Thank you. We're in your debt. <laughs> God damn! Oh, look, they've got food and booze here too! And it's so much cooler, which means fewer bugs. Perfect! And good sleeping. Honestly, I hate trying to sleep when it's warm. It's unpleasant. It seems they have an imitation of the island spring here. We can bathe. I should invite Juno when she's back. Oh, goodness. Bathe? <laughs> You'd be mad to hope a hot spring replica could take the edge off this chill. <laughs> Cold or not, there's nothing more refreshing than bathing. Would you care to join us? <laughs> oh, we're about to see Leon blush like crazy. I, I should think not. <laughs> For reasons too numerous to count. Oh, come on. You know you'd want to see Hulkenberg naked. Why? <laughs> she just doesn't get it. Anyway, strategy meeting. Let's get on with it. And we kind of need Yufa for that, don't we? So we seek to assassinate Luis. A difficult task. But you look to have an idea. Let's have it. First, the when. Under normal circumstances, we'd want to get him on the move. Maybe walking through a crowd while he's got less guards. That would be the plan. The problem is sneaking up on him with that giant ass thing. But unfortunately, that'd only work if he was someone with common sense, someone without combat ability, or someone who'd want to avoid collateral damage. And that isn't Luis. Worst case, he uses civilians as shields while more of his personal guard catch up, and things go sideways before we can get it done. But once he's inside the Opera House, he'll have a security detail at his beck and call. Even if we can sneak in, getting to him, Hmm. If we can't target him in transit, and we've practically zero chance of getting close to him, that leaves us with only one option. We oh. attack from a distance. Sorry, again, I didn't see the options. I mean, that's my own fault. What were the other ones? Join his personal guard, attack using magic, attack from a distance. No, I think it's I think it's we had joined the personal guard. Exactly. Oh, really? A bow and arrow isn't gonna do much good, right? It needs to be the lance. I mean, it is kind of roughly arrow shaped. Maybe we can. God damn, we need a big ass bow for that, though. Of course. So, what if we threw the lance, pierced him through from a distance? Could also just summon the big ass dragon from it. That'd be fun. Yufa, as the priestess, you can command the lance to return to you if it's far away, right? Wait, what? It's Mjolnir? You would have me use that power in reverse to cast it out instead. According to Juna, the ceiling of the Opera House has a chandelier big enough to support a person. From above, we'll target Luis in the royal box seats. You realize the entire audience is below that lighting? A stunt like that would get us noticed instantly. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the shadows alone would get someone to notice that shit. Wait, are you suggesting we do this during the show? 
Luis will be distracted. It's the best opportunity we could ask for. Besides, with you for there, we can even recover the lance easily. Ah, oh, this is gonna end badly. Hold a moment. I would need to launch it like an arrow. Such distance and such speed would require incredible focus. I, I don't think I could do it while aiming. Then just concentrate on the sheer mental force of it. Someone else can take over the role of actually throwing. Hmm. This gambit is sounding more far-fetched by the moment. But we also can't afford to wait for another opportunity. I'm kind of with Heisley on this one. This seems crazy. There is no other opportunity. Luis intends to kill Forden during the festival. That means if we do nothing, the fake will be exposed, and so will we. Indeed. Once our betrayal is made plain, we will never find a way to draw close to him again. This will likely be our first and last opportunity. But who's actually going to do the throwing? Let me guess, me. I'd rather leave it to you. With the royal magic protecting you, it's less likely that we'll fail this, even with interference. And besides... Uh, dude, if I'm holding the lance, the royal magic can't protect me. Laugh, if you like. I know it sounds silly, but... I really do believe you have the power to change fate itself. Jeez. <laughs> Indeed. Everyone here knows that firsthand. I feel the same. If I can trust you to do it, then I should be able to do my part as well. Will you do it, Captain? <sighs> all right. I'd always plan to. Yeah, all right. All right. I'll do it. Thanks. We owe you. On the day of, Juno will be at the venue ahead of us. We'll have her open the service entrance, and we'll infiltrate from there. Hmm. Is there anything I can do to help? Uh, keep watch. I want you to lure Luis's guards outside and cause a commotion while he's making the throw. I'm sure the Magnus brothers will be guarding the place too. Hulkenberg and I will secure the exit route in advance. Luis is a formidable foe. But we've overcome plenty of obstacles. Let's believe in the strength that got us this far. We can do this. Oh, this is... This is gonna be a thing. There's no way this works out exactly as planned. There's no way. Hell, I'm still down a party member. I know there's a lot weighing on your mind right now, but let's just try and get some rest and prepare for tomorrow. It'll get even colder at night, so try not to get sick, okay? Oh dear. I imagine I'm not allowed outside, right? Yep, didn't think so. Oh crud. I probably should see what everybody has to say here. This is probably one of those times. The fact that the lance passed muster is a testament to Norris's skill. Something the man can achieve truly amazing things. Even now, he's holed up in the runner, working away, tuning something or other with usual vigor, I don't doubt. He has his quirks, to be sure, but there can be no mistaking that he's a great credit to our endeavors. At last. <laughs> Tomorrow's finally Saint's Day. Lewis will show his face, and with the real lance, we'll... Don't worry. I'm prepared to do what we must. The man must be stopped. So this is Alterberry, eh? Colder climates tend to inspire stronger drinks among its people. But all that can wait until after our business is finished. Once we've trounced Lewis, I can think of no better celebration than a good stiff drink. <laughs> uh. But this was my first time seeing snow, and it was so cold I shivered. What a sensation! Oh, right. Juno's going to meet up with us later tonight because she's got so many things to do behind the scenes. Zeta, you go ahead and rest up. You've got a big role to play tomorrow yourself, after all. That's true enough. Alright. Time to get ready to raise some merry hell. Hmm? Late night. What's going on here? Oh, the bros. Hmm. We're about to be sussed, aren't we? What's wrong, Del? You've been quiet for a while now. That lance they handed over. You think it's real? Shit. Knew it. Can't say for certain, but I didn't feel any magla flowing through it. Can't see it exactly, but... How do I explain it? <sighs> Seriously, Nurse, you couldn't have just jammed a spare igniter in there? <sighs> I know what you mean, though. 
The Mostari got them third eyes that can see Magla, right? Hard to believe they'd worship that thing as a relic. Then maybe... You think they made some kind of fake? Even in that short time on the island? Shite. How'd they... Dude, we had weeks. We had weeks with that thing. Either way, we have to tell Lord Luis. No need. He'll have noticed by now, most likely. Not like they're any real threat to him, anyway. Mm. Most likely? That good enough for you, brother? Hmm. Del. You remember they talked all that helping anyone in need? Or something like that, anyway. Mm-hmm. Seemed proper daft at first. Seemed naive to act like that kind of thinking could actually fix all the broken, cruel, unjust shite in the world. <sighs> you gotta just do it one bit at a time, man. That's because it can't. Well, yeah, obviously, but... What was it we actually wanted in the first place? Equality? Or justice? Oh? This lot's working towards the future, and God help me, I started seeing it. Maybe what they're fighting for is something better than what Lord... Oh? That's enough, Baz. Joke or not, you'll get yourself killed. But them not even helped you out a few times, Del. <laughs> that really impressed me, like... I don't know how to say it, but... It was like a feeling I haven't felt since we started working for the Count. It's called pride, my man, and knowing you're doing the right thing. You know Lord Luis plans to take Forden out during the Saints Day Festival. Neither of us can afford to get distracted right now. Honestly, we should be going for him at that point. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Things are about to get messy. Oh, joy. Mm. Hmm. So that is the side they serve. Oh fuck, we've been, we've been sussed by Louis too. Let us teach them that even the best laid plans will go awry. Whether Fordens or our fallen kings. It was splendid entertainment while it lasted. However, the revelry ends here. The real question is who's in the cloak? Time marches on and the age of a new king draws nearer. Like, I can't see it as a party member. There's no way it's a party member. <sighs> and I doubt it's any of the brothers. The Day festivities in Alterbury will be kicking off very soon. Might be him. Might be Batlin, actually, who was in the cloak. On the eve of the festival, we'll be holding a dedication ceremony. On the church's authority, we'll be offering the gathered divine relics to God. Hmm. And it sounds like the candidates had a tough time this go around. Lots of new info coming in, even as I speak. From Candidate Rudolph, a legendary nail, thought lost to history. From Candidate Julian, can you believe it? Cloth garb said to have been worn by a saint. We've got artifacts of all kinds pulled from obscurity into the public eye. Archaeologists everywhere are positively vibrating, folks. But the news on everyone's lips is the announcement of Count Luis's unofficial participation. <laughs> unofficial, huh? As a matter of fact, a candidate working under Luis has reportedly acquired a phenomenal divine relic from a mysterious and exotic island. Meanwhile, Candidate Forden too may have claimed what is said to be the most glorious relic in history. It's his butt cheeks. Will we finally see a head-to-head -head competition between our top candidates? Only the coming days will tell. So Luis has finally made his move. Won't take him that long to catch up, I bet. Yes, but I also can't imagine Sanctifex Forden losing. I can. Honestly, I suspect this next sequence of events will see Forden dead and Luis at the top of the heap that we have to deal with. We're about to see a clash of giants. This will be no minor bout, that's for certain. <sighs> I still want to know who sussed us to Louis. Right. That's everyone. Let's go over the plan one last time. First, infiltration. 
Juna's got full rights to be in the venue, so she'll unlock the service door for us to sneak in. When it's time, I'll call the guards outside. That'll be your window to sneak in. Galica, you and Yufa. You three will head to the rooftop, where you'll get down to the chandelier. Mm. When I start my solo on stage, the lights will dim. That should be enough cover to hide whatever you're doing. Hopefully. Don't worry, I'll be with you. As for us, it's just as I explained last night. Luis said destroying Yufa's home would have been a necessary sacrifice. Like mine. If power's all he thinks will change the world, then we'll use power to stop him. Should we fail, though we may survive the ordeal, we will have no more leads to pursue. This will surely mark our final mission. I don't think it will. Like I said, I still think we're down a party member still. Like we're missing our seventh because we clearly we have a seventh to deal with. Um, I have so many more points to spend and I've been damned efficient. So I do not think this is the end of the game. You know, I've been trying to keep from dwelling, but I can't help but think of Grius. Honestly, this is reminding more me more of the um, uh, the casino mission in Persona 5, which is like one of the big turning points in the back half of the game. Sorry to bring that up now. <sighs> Even I have my fears, but let us remember him only by his truest wish. We'll make sure this succeeds for a world without tyrants. Mm hmm. Well, see you at the show. So begins our last mission then. <sighs> Let's get whatever we need to prepare and head over to the Opera House. Yeah, sounds good. Bonus, it's Idol's Day, which means I can go spend in some gold. We'll finally settle the score with Luis. It'll be okay. Oh, it'll be fine. I know you'll be able to do it. The Opera House is located at the highest point in the city. It'll just be you and Yufa in there. So make sure you both are geared up for everything. Not a bad idea. You know what's also not a bad idea? Stopping for the day. Yeah, I know, this is a lovely place to stop. <laughs> uh, but I, I have a strong feeling that once we get rolling with this, it's gonna be a bloodbath and I am not gonna have a stop point for over an hour. So better to stop now and be ready for that. So if you've enjoyed this, please leave a like and favorite and subscribe to join me for more fantastical racism. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.